Hi guys, welcome back to the Med Nuggets. So today we are going to talk about something very important that is sleep hygiene. So we know that a lot of people, especially at the younger generation, they think that going with you know less amount of sleep, it's something cool. It's something cool people do, right? But it's nothing to <laughs> brag about, really. You know, like getting three hours of sleep just because you had a lot of work or you were partying late night. It's not. It's not cool. Yeah. So. Yeah. Actually, sleep is a very important thing yeah, because yeah. it helps your brain to function properly and it keeps your uh, mental health sound. Yes. Right. So while you're asleep, your brain, it sorts through the memories you form during the day and it strengthens the important ones. Mm -hmm. And um, not only that, a good night's sleep can also um, help different parts of your brain to communicate with each other. Yeah. Like, for example, your prefrontal cortex and your amygdala. So the prefrontal cortex is a part of the brain that uh, deals with self-control. And the amygdala is a part of uh, the brain that is responsible for your emotions. It's the emotional center of your brain. So it allows these parts of your brain to communicate with each other in order to keep your emotions in check. Right. Yeah. So sleep is something that's very important. Yeah, it also helps your body and mind to recharge, right? So it leaves you refreshed and alert when you wake up. And also, uh, good sleep is important to develop a strong immune system to fight off diseases definitely so without enough sleep your brain cannot uh, function properly as well so it can impair your abilities to concentrate to think clearly and also to process memories yeah and um, as you may know drowsiness while driving is actually a leading cause of motor vehicle accidents mm -hmm. right so um, and sleep deprivation can affect the brain just as much as alcohol uh, it can cause fatal accidents in the workplace, which is a major issue again in shift workers, right? Especially among in doctors. doctors yeah. And also sleep deficiency can cause a lot of chronic health problems like heart disease, kidney disease, high blood pressure, diabetes, stroke and whatnot. Yeah. And um, I think a lot of young people, they think that you can get, uh, you can learn <coughs> to get on by little sleep by less amount of sleep right few hours of sleep without negative effects like if your body gets used to it then it's okay but it's not like that research shows that getting enough quality sleep at the right time is vital for mental health for physical health uh, for uh, quality of life and safety right and um, according to the center for disease control and prevention about one in three adults in the United States, they report not getting enough rest or sleep every day. And around 50 to 70 million Americans, they have chronic or ongoing sleep disorders. Yeah, that's a lot of people. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. So that's now, just in America also. Yeah. Now, this brings us to the question, what are our brains actually doing while we sleep? Yeah. Right. So, um, although it may look like you're switching off your brain when you fall asleep, the brain is actually far from inactive. So what we know from studying patterns of brain electrical activity is that while you sleep, your brain, it cycles through two main types of patterns, which is the REM sleep and the slow wave sleep, the rapid mm -hmm. eye movement sleep and slow wave sleep. So slow wave sleep is something that happens more at the beginning of the night. And as the night progresses, we have more and more of REM, REM sleep, sleep yeah. right? And it's during this REM sleep that you see all these kinds of dreams. We basically dream, mm -hmm. right? And during this time, our brains, it, our brains, they show similar patterns of activity to when we are awake, which again proves the point that your brain doesn't actually go off. It remains active while you're sleeping, right? And also a lot of things happen in our brain during our sleep. And um, one of these is uh, to help it. It helps us remember experiences we had during the day. So REM sleep is thought to be important for emotional memories, any, emo any uh, memories that revolve around love, around fear, mm -hmm. so any emotion, right? Um, so REM sleep is thought to be important for these kind of memories and also for procedural memory, things like how to ride a bicycle right. or how to do something, how to do a particular thing, right? On the other hand, um, slow wave sleep is thought to store declarative memories. Um, de declarative memories means it's like a conscious record of your experiences and what you know things like names dates places facts those mm. kind of stuff you know yeah. 
and our brain it uh, replaces experiences during sleep right Ex your daily experiences so these memories of your experiences are, are like a, a segment from a movie yeah it can be rewound it can be played forward <coughs> again it can Sorry. be uh, replayed so this replaying of your memories it occurs in this part uh, in your brain called the hippocampus right so this hippocampus is important for memory and this was a uh, proven by a study which was done on rats so these rats uh, after they had performed a navigation exercise when they were resting uh, it was found that their brain replaced uh, the path it took through the maze so through this it was proven that our brain basically replaced your uh, your experiences and this replaying helps to strengthen the connections between your brain cells and which is important for uh, consolidating memories. Yeah, but then if you take a memory like what you had this morning for breakfast, it's not uh, really important for us to remember that kind of yeah. a thing, right? So um, that's why the brain needs to be selective about what it remembers. So sleep allows the brain to sift through memories. It um, sort of filters all the unwanted stuff so that it allows you to remember the things that are important to you, mm. right? One way it does this is by scaling down all the unwanted connections in the brain. So a leading theory of uh, sleep function is this synaptic homeostasis hypothesis. So what is this synaptic homeostasis hypothesis? Synaptic refers to the synapses in our brain, the neural connections, connections the, brain, the connections in your brain. Yeah. Homeostasis means balance, right? So um, this hypothesis, it refers to this widespread weakening of connections, which we call synapses in medical terms, that happen throughout the brain as we sleep. And this is thought to sort of counterbalance the strengthening of connections that happen during learning when we are awake, right? So by scaling down all the unwanted excess connections, sleep effectively uh, kind of cleans the slate so that we can learn again the next okay. day, yeah. right? So not getting enough sleep um, it can actually interfere with the scaling down process and can lead to more unwanted memories in our head yeah so when you're studying you should get good sleep definitely to remember <laughs> to remember what you studied yeah because you'll have all the unwanted memories and you won't have space in your brain basically for the important stuff, stuff. right yeah and also researchers believe that sleep can remove waste products from your brain cells so uh, something that happens less efficiently if your brain is awake right yeah. so if we take uh, our brain cells they are highly sensitive to their environment and harmful uh, chemical substances toxins they can interfere with how your brain works with your nerve function and it can damage your cells right so it is important to remove these waste products from uh, your brain yeah so for example a chemical called adenosine it starts to accumulate in your body throughout the day as you become tired and then this uh, then our body breaks down this compound when you're asleep so when you don't get enough sleep these chemicals can accumulate in your brain and can be uh, harmful to your brain cells yeah and also uh, another important thing to remember is that every organ in your body has something called a lymphatic system yeah. that flushes out all the waste, waste products, products yeah. right but when it comes to the brain it doesn't have such a thing. Instead, the fluid in the brain, which we call the cerebrospinal fluid or the, or the CSF, it recirculates through the brain, interchanging with interstitial fluid to remove all the toxic Toxins. products, right? So sleep is a big deal for us because this entire house cleaning service that happens in your brain, it happens when you're sleeping. sleeping. It yeah. happens when you sleep, right? So. Think of it as a house party, right? When you host a party, you don't start cleaning up until after the guests head home, right? So our brain cells, they operate in a similar fashion, right? When they are busy working and supporting normal function, they're not going to have time to clean up waste, right? So it's only during sleep that your brain switches to clearing toxins and uh, waste products, right? Yeah. And also research uh, has shown a correlation between um, sleep disturbances lack of sleep and a lot of neurological uh, diseases yeah. like stroke like dementia parkinson's disease and all of that and uh, so research shows that deep sleep it decreases uh, with age so why is deep sleep important because 
it's important because a lower amount of sleep deep sleep is associated with an increase in a protein called beta amyloid and this has been found to accumulate in uh, people with alzheimer's disease yeah. so because of that disrupted sleep can increase uh, the risk of neurodegenerative brain diseases yeah actually the good thing about this is um this connection between sleep and brain health it shows up that it shows us that there's potential to prevent and treat uh, brain, diseases. brain diseases by improving sleep yeah. right so um, for example i read in this uh, study that researchers use a sound to stimulate slow wave sleep in order to improve deep sleep in older adults right and the amount of improvement in slow wave sleep that was observed in these adults it was um, directly correlated to an improvement in memory mm. right and um, not only that in another study when we used timed light when we used uh, timed light therapy to improve the sleep in people with parkinsons it also slowed the progression of parkinsons disease and it um, reduced the severity of parkinsons in these patients mm. right so this means if we can um, find ways to improve our sleep, sleep we can prevent the development of certain diseases or even slow the progression of existing diseases yeah. diseases we already are suffering from like, like parkinsons. parkinsons yeah right so sleep is actually very important like we said with the all the uh, importance of uh, sleep that we've just mentioned right and a lot of people underestimate the this importance of sleep yes so improving your sleep can even help manage certain conditions like what uh, Malisha and I explained like Parkinson's like Alzheimer's like severe conditions like this yeah right so how much sleep do you actually need the most important the most question. important <laughs> question right so this depends the we asked this question in our in our, on, on Instagram and Twitter as well and around 47 people they said it's six they think it's six to seven hours uh, on insta and on twitter 50 uh, person said it's seven to nine hours but actually depends on your age and genetics yes. like if you are a person like between the age of 26 to 64 years then you need around seven to nine hours and newborns they usually need more than 12 hours of sleep right so it depends on your age and also your genetics so the general recommendation is around seven, seven to, to nine, nine hours, hours of sleep. sleep. Yeah. Right. So today we thought of inviting a guest for our podcast. She's Anuprabha. She's one of our friends. She's also a medical student from Nanjing Medical University. And uh, she's here to tell us her story about the sleep problems she has been experiencing during med school. Uh, so Anuprabha, it's nice to have you here. Thanks, guys. It's really nice that you invited <laughs> me. Yeah. So I'm going to start with a few questions first. Um, life is predictable as a medical student and it's very stressful there's exam after exam then hospital assignments and whatnot which means screw sleep I'm gonna have to get this stuff done somehow mm. or the other right so can you tell us a little bit about your sleep schedule like how many hours of sleep do you get uh, every day and do you follow the same routine as in do you go do you go to sleep at the same time every day yeah well it's pretty hectic like my schedule and everything so sleep is like the last of my priorities sometimes it's just pretty bad but yeah um i usually sleep like i i try to go to sleep around midnight so uh, around 12 i'm like in bed but then for some weird reason i just keep on like either i'm on my phone or something and it takes like about one and a half hours for me to like actually fall asleep and then i have to wake up at six to go to hospital so like the alarm rings and then I just turn it off and then around 6.30 I'm like out of my bed just hurry out of the dorm. I mean I go to the bathroom and all that and then yeah so. So do you have any idea at around what time you fall asleep actually you know even maybe, though you go to bed early? Yeah maybe around like 1.30 or 2.00. So that's around 5 hours, five, of, five sleep, and yeah. hours of sleep. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, do you take naps during the daytime like how long? Yeah of course like um, after I come back from hospital around like 4.00. I usually sleep and then it, I end up sleeping for like two hours maybe mm -hmm. yeah and then right after I go to wake work out so so that's naps during the evening right yep and then you go to work out and that's in the night Again, the night yeah yeah yep. okay and then and you mentioned that you go to bed at around 12 o'clock at night right yeah like I go to my bed 
around 12, but then you know, sleep, it's like 1.30-ish. Yeah. And uh, what, what time do you usually come back after working out? Around like 8.30, mm-hmm. 9. Okay. Yeah. And then you have your dinner right after. So. Yeah, definitely. I'm like really hungry after workout. And sometimes so my friends you... come around too. So we end up eating. So what do you usually have for dinner? Is it a heavy meal or something light? Usually it's a heavy meal. Um, sometimes you order like really unhealthy stuff like chicken and rice and all this. And we just eat and eat. And this like lasts like this keeps going until like ten sometimes. Oh, okay. And okay, now one important thing: Do you uh, look at your phone like just after you go to bed? What do you do? Like, do you scroll through your phone, like Instagram, or do you do some you know relaxing things like meditating or something like that? Oh yeah. So like it starts with like me taking my phone to like just you know keep my alarm and then i end up like turning on my vpn and just going to instagram and i keep scrolling and scrolling and then i'm like okay stop but yeah that's my usual night routine (laughs) okay so what do you usually do when you have trouble falling asleep um usually when i like have trouble i try to i just i don't really do anything i think i'm just on my bed tossing and turning yeah do you take any sleep meds to help you fall asleep no No. i've never really tried that before sometimes i just put some music on and like try to get in the mood to sleep but yeah do you use alcohol or smoking to help you fall asleep no No. No. also one one other thing Uh, do you drink coffee during the daytime during the daytime yes and even during the nighttime sometimes like especially after the workout like I use coffee like in my head I'm like okay this is gonna help me relax but you know I think it just like makes me more Excited. invigorated yeah mm-hmm. so that, that's around two cups of coffee per day yeah yeah, so I think that's it. Really. That's it. Oh, cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, Anu, for joining us. And you know, like we said, medicine is stressful, and she's having an exam tomorrow. Thanks for having me. Yeah. <laughs> so she'll leave us. So thanks once again for joining us, and all the best for your exam. Yes, hey, thank, thank you. you so much for joining us. Yeah. So now let's discuss how Anuprabha can improve her sleep and what she did wrong, which caused her sleep problems. Right. Yeah. So the most important thing is make a schedule yeah. and stick to that schedule. Right. You've heard it time and again, wake up and go to bed at the same time every day, right? even on weekends. So sleep is a systematic process that our bodies regulate automatically. Right? If you mess with the system, you throw the rhythm out of whack. Yeah. And the result is sleepless nights, dragging days and inefficiency during your waking hours. Yeah. Right? And uh, another thing that Anu mentioned was that she have uh, naps during towards the evening around two hours and then she goes to work out so naps can be a handy way to regain energy during the day but it can throw off sleep at night so to avoid this try to keep naps relatively short like 30 minutes not for like two hours and also limited to the early afternoon not towards the towards the evening and not towards the night and also when you sleep it's important for you to take seven to Uh, nine hours of sleep at a stretch so let me tell you something that my mom does Uh, so my mom she's a working mom and uh, she usually sleeps around four to five hours uh, a day right that's her routine Mm. right so um, and I always tell her like you should all you should get enough sleep Uh, we learned this in med school you know (laughs) like you should get seven to nine hours of sleep every day and then she's like you know um, she takes naps every day for like two to three hours during her lunch break so then she's like even though i sleep around four to five hours a day i take around one to two hours of naps every day so that mm. is four hours plus one two yeah, hours that's like six, six hours. hours i sleep for around six hours every day yeah right and then i tell my mom that's not how that's not how it works you know yeah. <laughs> you're supposed to get uh, seven to nine hours of sleep at a stretch, stretch yeah you know because when we fall asleep our brain it goes through these um sleep patterns it goes from slow wave sleep to REM sleep and all that right Mm. so it won't happen unless you uh, get uh, a certain number of hours of sleep at a stretch continuously right Uh, so regularity is the most important thing because we all have a bad night here and there right Mm. but if it is chronic if you uh, don't sleep well like for for long periods of time if you uh, don't sleep well it can have a bigger impact on our health 
the general recommendation as we mentioned before is 7 to 8 hours eight right hours. 8 hours of sleep per day for adults but this again can vary with age and genetics and also there are um and also there are some people who can function well even after sleeping for just four to five hours because some studies have found that these people they have a rare genetic mutation that allows them to function well even after uh, even after less than 6.5 hours of sleep right cool <laughs> so uh, yeah so how do you know if you're getting enough sleep um, consider how you feel during the day right are you able to stay awake and attentive and carry out your day carry out your daily activities since we can't get regular imaging of our brains these daytime indicators can help us figure out how much sleep we actually need right yeah and um, also cut down on uh, caffeine right so Anupama mentioned that she has a cup of coffee uh, in the morning or in the day and also uh, towards the night right after she woke out I think she mentioned that she has a cup of coffee yeah so and she also said that even though she thinks that it will kind of kind of recover her body after the workout it actually keeps her too excited and have trouble falling asleep right yeah so because uh caffeine it is a stimulant yes and it can keep you wired even when you want to rest so try to avoid it later in the day and if you are a person who is taking a lot of caffeine then it can lead to lack of sleep uh when you actually want to sleep yeah and uh, not only coffee even tea chocolate even these uh, stuff they have caffeine so don't take this stuff after uh, 3 p.m because uh, the caffeine it can stay in your system for a long time it can stay in your system for like hours and hours right yeah, yeah and the other thing is Anu mentioned that uh, she comes at around eight o'clock in the night from her workout yeah uh, so another important thing is guys you should not work out you should not uh, work out in the evenings it's mm. good if you can work out in the morning so during the daytime but doing it right before you go to the bed uh, will uh, reduce the quality of your sleep significantly right mm. so exercising during the day this can help you wind down in the evening and prepare for a good night's sleep right yeah and like we mentioned in one of our uh, episodes i think uh, when you exercise it releases endorphin which is the happy hormones it keeps you excited so you can't fall asleep you shouldn't be excited when you're falling asleep right i think we mentioned this in our episode number one in the last two months yeah. Oh, yeah in both the episodes in both so the if episodes. you guys haven't checked it out <laughs> go check it out <laughs> yeah and um, also having dinner late right yes. anu mentioned that she goes she sleeps in the evening she has a small nap and then she goes to work out and then she have her meal right? yeah. her dinner which is that. usually heavy she said chicken and rice and all that right yeah. and she have dinner with her friends so eating dinner uh, late especially if it's big if it's heavy if it's a spicy meal can mean that it takes time for your body to digest it so your body will still be digesting it when it's time for bed Right? So any food or snack before bed should be on the lighter side to help you fall asleep much faster. Yeah, so watch what and when you eat. Yeah. Right? And uh, again, we asked this question uh, on Instagram and on Twitter whether, uh, whether you all think uh, if alcohol can help, you get a very, uh, can help you get a better quality sleep. Right? And that 12.5% of the people they said on Twitter, they said that yes, yeah. alcohol helps <laughs> and 25 people from insta said yes it can help but no it may be make it, it can help uh, you uh, you to fall asleep easily but it the effect wears off and it can disrupt your sleep later in the night so that's why you have hangovers the next day right because your quality of sleep is not good even though you fall asleep the quality is not good yeah. So it's best to moderate alcohol consumption and avoid it uh, later in the evening. So don't uh, use alcohol as a sleep remedy beca because it can make uh, you sleepy, but it also disrupts the sleep cycle and it, it can awaken you prematurely mm. and make it difficult for you to get back to sleep again. Yeah. And uh, another thing is that a lot of people, even myself, we all, we all go through our phones, right? Yeah. <laughs> Before falling asleep. <laughs> That's like a habit for all of us. And even Anu mentioned that she usually scrolls through the social media uh, after getting on bed. Yeah. Right? So 
you should not do that as well you should build a 30 to 60 minute uh, period where your device free because cell phones tablets tab uh, laptops they can all all uh, cause a mental stimulation that is hard to shut off and it also generate uh, blue light that may decrease your melatonin production melatonin is uh, important for sleep right and some experts even recommend hiding your clock as well <laughs> <laughs> so if you take a look at clock if you take a look at the clock then it can transition from sleep to uh, being awake yeah and make it making it harder for you to fall back to sleep yeah and also guys make sure you have a comfortable mattress a good pillow and uh, some co and comfortable bedding because it's the little things that count right yeah. and also set your room temperature to like 18 to 20 degrees celsius because a colder room will help you fall asleep faster like I remember Anu mentioned that uh, whenever she decreases the AC, the, the yeah. temperature of the air conditioner, she it helps her fall asleep, asleep faster, yeah. right? And uh, the reason behind this is right before you fall asleep, your body temperature, it drops as mm. a way to conserve energy and sleeping in a colder room will help you drop your body temperature faster, which will help you fall asleep soon. So that's the reason behind uh, this whole uh, maintaining a colder room temperature, right. you know, will help yeah. you fall asleep faster. Yeah. Then also turn out the lights because darkness can stimulate the body to release melatonin. Melatonin is a natural sleep hormone and um, light like sunlight can suppress it. So mm. keeping your bedroom as dark as possible at night can help promote the production of melatonin and the onset of sleep. Mm. And um, getting enough sun during the day similarly can help you stay alert and awake because yeah. it suppresses the melatonin, melatonin. production. Yeah. right? And um, also, if your room is too noisy, like you're living with a roommate or something, right? You could always <laughs> use earplugs. Ear but yeah. then if wearing earplugs is something that's uncomfortable for you, then you can always try a white noise machine or even a fan to cancel out the excess uh, sound, the noise. Yeah. Right? And uh, another thing is you can uh, try calming scents, like light smells such as uh, lavender. It can induce a calmer state of mind and... Uh, make it easier for you to fall asleep yeah so this was proved by one of us one of the, the studies which included 79 uh, college students with reported s sleep issues so in that what they did was they divided these students into two groups one student uh, one group of students wearing a lavender patch that, oh, okay. that gives that smell out and also they practiced a uh, good sleep hygiene and there was another group which did not have this lavender patch, but they also practiced good uh, sleep hygiene. Yeah. And when their sleep indexes were measured, the sleep quality indexes were measured, it was found that the group which had the lavender patch and also practiced good sleep hygiene, they had better quality sleep than the group that did not have uh, the lavender patch and only practiced sleep hygiene. So that showed, that proved the fact that common sense can actually help you fall asleep in the night. That's an interesting study. You found yeah. this on PubMed? Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay, nice. nice. Yeah, so guys, uh, keep your routine consistent. Uh, follow the same steps every night. Uh, things like putting on your pajamas and brushing your teeth. It can signal your brain that it's time to sleep. and that's Sleep uh, time. Sleep, it's sleep time. Yeah. yeah. And also create a bedtime ritual. Um, engage in activities that help you calm down, like, you know, take a warm bath, meditate, you mm. know read a book yeah <laughs> and do all that stuff it doesn't matter what you do as long as it relaxes, relaxes you yeah right and another very common thing that a lot of people abuse use or abuse i don't know which word to use because a lot of people abuse this stuff yeah. is sleep medications right so when we ask this question from anu she doesn't use uh, sleep meds Medicine. to fall asleep but yeah. a lot of friends we know they yeah. use uh, sleep meds right so the problem with uh, these sleep meds is that these drugs they don't typically provide deep sleep Right. And in other cases, the drugs that provide deep sleep, they can induce deep sleep all night long. But um, they also cause people to wake up feeling hungover or more tired the next the other day. Right. Mm. So when it comes to deep sleep, guys, more is not better. Timing is important. Right. Because deep sleep is necessary earlier in the night and you don't really need it closer to morning. Mm. Right. So melatonin, it affects the circadian system and promotes sleep by decreasing the arousal or alerting signal from the circadian clock, right? Yeah. And uh, with aging, our natural melatonin levels, they go down, 
right? So if you choose to take melatonin, be sure to stick to small doses, usually around half a milligram to like three milligrams, right? Unless recommended otherwise by your doctor, because high doses of melatonin it can affect your vascular system okay. and lead to diseases, you know. Yeah. So avoid uh, using sleeping pills for more than two weeks at mm. a time because they can be addictive. Yeah. and it can cause rebound insomnia in other words when you try to stop taking them you can have even more difficulty falling asleep right yeah and not only that um, make gradual adjustments right if you want to shift your sleep times don't try to do it at once because it can mess up with your schedule yeah. right so instead make small step by step adjustments of up to an hour or two so that you can get adjusted and settle into a new uh, schedule. schedule yeah, yeah. And also don't, when you have difficulty falling asleep, don't toss and turn, right? Yeah. Like Anuprabha, she said that she usually toss and turn, turn around to, so that she falls asleep. But that actually disrupts your uh, mental connection between being in bed and actually being asleep. Yes. Right. So for that reason, uh, if after 20 minutes you haven't gotten, uh, like if you haven't fallen asleep, then get up, stretch, read or do something that, will relax your mind yeah. and uh, so that you can fall asleep right yeah and guys when it comes to sleep it's always quality over quantity applicable yeah. to everything Every in life day. yeah <laughs> yeah so if your sleep problems persist uh, you can always keep a sleep diary and uh, jot down the type of problems you're experiencing when they occur because this will help you to identify your triggers the things that you are doing wrong during your day mm. which uh, is affecting your sleep right yeah. and at the same time it will serve as a useful tool uh, for when you go I mean when you talk to a doctor that your doctor will be able to identify uh, your problems your sleep problems yeah. and uh, all that stuff and your doctor will be able to help you yeah. you know uh, when you show him or her this book yeah your sleep diary yeah uh, so basically the most important point that you have to take from our podcast is to have good quality sleep for at least seven to nine hours that's the recommended period seven to eight or seven to nine hours of yeah. sleep right more than seven hours <laughs> yeah more than seven hours and not yeah. less than that and continuously not four hours in the daytime and then not <laughs> like, like my mom yeah <laughs> don't break it up just continuously seven hours of sleep that's very important so that's the end of our podcast and hope you have a good night's sleep today and see you on our next podcast yeah guys bye bye thank, thank you, you.